Carolyn. You're good to go. All right. So it's uh, 101 p.m. I'm yeah. calling the July 5th, 2022 meeting of the Albemarle County Architecture Review Board to order. This meeting is being held pursuant to and in compliance with ordinance number 20-A-16, an ordinance to ensure the continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster. A quorum is present. Architecture Review Board members present electronically are Frank Hancock, Tara Matsuno, and myself, Chris Henningsen. Um, opportunities for the public to access and participate in the electronic meeting are posted on the Albemarle County website at the Albemarle County calendar. The public has real-time audiovisual access to this meeting over Zoom and real-time audio access over telephone. Both is provided in the lawfully posted meeting notice. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the county's website. This online meeting is a public record and subject to disclosure under the Freedom of Information Act. All speakers, when it is your turn to speak, please first state your name for the record. Everyone who is participating today, it is good practice to mute your microphone until it is your turn to speak. Applicants who are making presentations, note that your presentation is limited to a total of 15 minutes, which you can divide among your team members. Carolyn will let us know when the 15 minutes are up. Uh, do any ARB members have anything to disclose? No. All right, great. Uh, Carolyn, are there any members of the public that wanna make a comment about a project that is not on the agenda for review? No, not at this time. All right, great. Uh, there is one consent agenda item today. It is ARB 2022-47, Forest Lake Self-Storage. Uh, does any ARB member want to move the Forest Lake Self-Storage application off the consent agenda for discussion? No. Okay. No. Great. So um, would anybody like to move to approve the consent agenda? I'll move that we approve the consent agenda. Second that. All right, let's uh, put it to a vote. All right, Mr. Henningsen? Aye. Mr. Mitsuno? Aye. Mr. Hancock? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's one regular review item today. It is ARB 2022-48, Overlook Hotel. Uh, Chris, do you have a presentation ready? Yes. Hold on one second. Thanks. Are you all viewing the slideshow? The application you're viewing today is a final site plan for a four-story wood stream suites hotel with surface parking surrounding and associated site improvements. Subject property lo is located on the south side of Route 250, west of the intersection of Hanson Road and Route 250. The most recent version of this initial plan was reviewed by the ARB in November 2021 and February 2022. Summarize the staff report, the focus is largely on the landscaping of the rectangle walls used to establish the site. Regarding the building design, the material and color samples provided confirm their appearance or their appropriateness in relation to the surrounding context of the site. The only change since, to the building since the previous submittal is the base being revised from a thin to a full size brick. Provided detail for the porch canopy element shows that it would use a black ACM panels that relate to the overall building design. Regarding site landscaping, since the previous review, three cryptomirror trees have been added at the base of the lowest retaining wall on the west side of the site. However, the cryptomirror trees proposed for this site are spaced too closely for their anticipated spread, and there are large gaps in the grouping along the base of the walls. Providing greater spacing between the trees along the base of the walls will allow these trees, as they mature, to mitigate, mitigate the visual impact of the overall wall structure from the entrance corridor. 
staff recommends approval of the final site plan with the revisions listed in the staff report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, Chris, thanks for that presentation. Um, Frank Hancock, do you have any questions? I don't. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Tara? Thank you for the presentation, Chris. I don't have any questions at this time. All right, thanks. So, so um, Kevin, do you have a presentation ready? Yes, thank you. Let me share my screen here. Can you all see the screen? Yeah. Great. Good afternoon. My name is Kevin Schaefer. Uh, I'm the studio director for the Charlottesville branch of Design Develop. Uh, I have with me here on the call today, Rachel Moon, who is representing Shimp Engineering, as well as Doug Ellis, who is representing Suburban Capital. Thanks as always to Chris and county staff um, for their diligent staff report and the guidance through the ARB process. As staff mentioned previously, um, and just to briefly summarize the process to date, this project initially came before the board in November of last year. And at that time, the board and county staff had several comments regarding the architectural appearance. So a revised preliminary submission was reviewed in February of this year. Um, that submission garnered more favorable comments with a few remaining detailed questions um, that was to be answered in our final submission. So included in this final submission are the responses to those outstanding comments from the previous submissions, um, including ensuring all the correct notes regarding the selected color of the retaining wall material, uh, notes regarding flush mounted PTAC units, uh, detail for the decorative guardrail at the retaining walls, um, and the requested detailing for the porch elements on the entrance corridor side of the building. Um, also included in this uh, first final submission was the revised landscaping plans per um, county staff comments. <clears throat> On the architectural side of the project, uh, we refined our material selections, as staff noted, by working with Deb Brown at Allied Concrete to select a brick that was locally sourced, uh, readily available, and came in both standard full depth sizes and a thin brick veneer size option. So that brick was um, that was selected is the General Shale Raleigh Court Brick, which is manufactured in Renup and is one of the standard colors. This brick selection allows for both a full depth brick base um, and it has a water table shape that will mark the change in dimensionality between the first and second levels. Uh, we utilize um, soldier course decorative banding as shown on these elevations. And we're marking each floor level with a soldier course, as well as above windows. Um, additionally, Deb helped us specify the retaining wall material, uh, which is manufactured by Belgard and is the Anchor Diamond Pro stone cut segmented block. This material is produced in the Richmond plant um, and is frequently used around this area, including the Wawa's across the street. Additional detailing was requested at the side porch element. After exploring several material options, including parge and painted CMU columns, Eve's Hardy, uh, and brick options, we selected the aluminum composite metal panel for a few reasons. Um, first, that material um, is immediately adjacent to the brake metal trim that is used throughout the rest of the project in the coping and the fascia trim. And we felt like those two materials should match each other. Uh, we also had maintenance concerns uh, regarding the painting that would be required on a parge and painted CMU, um, as well as the hardy panel. Um, and finally, Eves would have been a poor choice just being at ground level and in close proximity to pedestrians. The dark color of the coping um, and the fascia trim is utilized by those porch elements, the columns. Uh, and it becomes a unifying material for a cohesive design. And this sheet shows our anticipated construction techniques and provides insight into the anticipated look and feel of the side porch elements. Uh, so with that, I will turn the presentation over to Rachel Moon, who will provide responses to the outstanding landscaping and site plan comments offered by county staff. 
All right, thank you, Kevin. Um, so as described by staff, the majority of the comments were related to the landscaping plan. So first, the in this exhibit, the cryptomerias have been revised to reflect the mature spread of the tree, which um, also provided for greater spacing of the cryptomerias and would better screen the retaining wall at the base. Um, the, site, the landscape plan also swapped out the two southern magnolias towards the west elevation for two shad blow service berries, which would have a more narrow spread. Um, the detail for the retaining wall spacing with the trees has been updated to um, detail a minimum of three feet off the wall and where that was a little snug towards the rear parking area, we revised the parking layout to um, allow a little bit more breathing room for those large shade trees in the back. Um, and finally, the landscape plan, the schedule has been updated so that all the shrubs will be um, 24 inches at the time of planting. And that should wrap up the presentation on our end if the board has any questions for us. All right, uh, thank you for that presentation. Um, Frank Hancock, do you have any uh, questions for the applicant? Just curious, uh, what is the spacing on the cryptom areas, the new spacing, like on center? On center, it's approximately 40 feet if there's going to be a spread of 20 to 30. And what was it before? Um, originally, the canopy was shown a lot smaller, so I believe they were spread probably 20 feet apart. Okay. Um, and then I just have a question for Kevin Schaefer. The banding that you've added, does that stand proud at all, or is that in the same plane? Uh, it would be in the same plane. Okay. And same brick. Same brick. Those are the only questions I had. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Frank. Um, Tara, do you have any questions for the applicant? Um, I do not. Thank you. All right. Thanks. I also do not um, have any questions. Um, uh, Carolyn, are there any uh, members of the public who would like to make a comment? I do not think so. Let me double check. No, we don't have any attendees at this time, so the answer would be no. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, ARB will now go into discussion. Um, Tara, do you have any uh, comments? Uh, no, I'd just like to thank the applicant for, um, you know, working with county staff to um, come to this point. I appreciate the modifications I've seen them. All right, thank you. Uh, Frank? I agree. Um, this The presentation, the applicant's presentation was very helpful, uh, especially as just walking through the landscape comments and responses and how you plan to address those. Just thinking about the Cryptomeria spacing as installed, that's going to look really sparse. So I, my only comment would just be maybe to work with staff is make sure that satisfies what the staff is looking for as far as we don't want to go too far on the other end. Um, you know, it's definitely a constrained growing space. So I don't know if we can use or if we should use that full mature form of the tree or if, you know, there are other considerations that would maybe bring them a little bit closer together. But um, other than that, no, I appreciate the applicant working with us and getting it to this point. I think it's a nice project. All right, thanks, Frank. I uh, also agree. Um, I appreciate uh, how the applicant has um, handled this whole process. And uh, I guess, uh, well done. If um, could we review the uh, 
recommended motion. Margaret, we can see that you're trying to share, but we can't see your document. Let's try, let's, let me stop sharing and try sharing again. All right, now let's try it again, Margaret. You almost look frozen. Nicole, if you can hear me. There you are. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> You're not frozen now. <laughs> yeah, my, my mouse uh, has a mind of its own. Okay. Uh, let me <laughs> Just want to make sure you're okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't unmute. I couldn't. I love technology. Give me a second. Hold on. Are you able to see the Word document now? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So, um, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so the motion would be to um, approve with the seven uh, conditions that were listed in the staff report. All right. Thank you. Um, I, I don't have any adjustments um, or suggestions. I think these are all uh, fairly reasonable. Um, Tara, do you have any comments? Uh, I think the only thing, and I guess I would defer to Frank, is just um, if we'd want to change language on the um, spacing to um, accommodate the applicant working with staff to resolve that issue. But I don't have any comments separate from that. Frank? That's a good question. I don't know if, if the comment as it stands is enough, you know, in the conversation or review we've had today would be enough direction for the applicant, you know, when they make this final submittal. Margaret, or if you think we should, that should be reflected in this motion. So if we could add this, consider the constrained planting area in the spacing. Um, I think that sounds reasonable. That works for me. Yeah, that sounds good to me. All right, well, if there aren't any other uh, comments. Um, would anybody like to move, uh, make a motion? I'll move to approve ARB-2022-48 Overlook Hotel with the conditions listed in the staff report amended as follows. Um, edit item number two add the following sentence, consider the constrained planting area in the spacing. All right, thank you. I'll uh, second that. Um, so if we could go to a vote. Okay, Mr. Hancock. Aye. Mr. Matsuno. Aye. Mr. Henningsen. Aye. Thank you. Thanks.
All right, so we have uh, two work sessions today. Uh, the first one is on the countywide certificate of appropriateness criteria for structures located 750 feet or more from the entrance corridor. Uh, Margaret, um, do you have a presentation? Yeah, thank you. Right. Can you see my slide? Yes, thank you. Right. Okay. Um, at our uh, last meeting, um, June 21st, uh, we talked about the criteria for the countywide certificate of appropriateness for buildings that are 750 feet or more from the entrance corridor. And we focused on the color criteria and the reference to limiting the use of bright white. Um, um, we brought this up in reference to our review of a proposal for an apartment building complex in North Point development. And we ended that discussion on June 21st with two follow-up items. One was to look for um, an example of the Arctic white that was used on a completed project so that everyone could um, do a drive-by and, and take a look at it. And then um, the second point was um, for me to talk with the applicant about changing the colors for the project because neither the white or the blue met the criteria. So I did talk with the applicants and they are considering alternate color palettes. And uh, we found an example of the Arctic white siding. Um, this is a photo of a clubhouse in the development in Crozet that uses the Arctic white siding. Um, and in this photo, um, the uh, end elevation of the clubhouse is up, uh, on the left side of the photo and there are townhouses in the distance. Um, most of those have more muted tones than the Arctic white, but you can see a couple of spaces where the, um, the white does show up. Let me see if I can highlight those. Uh, for example, this one here, and maybe this one down here. So um, just have an opportunity today, uh, if any uh, Airbnb members had an opportunity to visit the site that we can share um, additional comments um, or concerns about that color. Um, at this point. Leave the Thanks, photo up. You want me to leave the photo up or? Yeah, that might be useful just for a discussion. Um, I guess there was there was some amount of discussion last week about kind of, you know, is is Arctic white, you know, like how how white is it? It it seems pretty darn white to me. Um, and, you know, I don't, I think if just in general, if, if white is considered not appropriate for entrance corridors, then, um, you know, I think Arctic white, to me at least, falls squarely in the category of, of white. Um, per personally, I don't think white is is inappropriate, but to, to me, that's like a completely different uh, question. I think, you know, the if it, if the question is, does Arctic white qualify as white, it, it certainly does in my opinion. But um, Frank or Tara, if you have any additions or anything. Um, yeah, I mean, I know that we all kind of got, um, we all threw in our two cents on the, the many facets of this question. Um, and I know that not everybody is here to continue this discussion, but I had an opportunity to visit the seam white. Um, yeah, and I and I do feel like I was um, won over by Frank's argument that because this is part of the administrative review process rather than a for, full board review process, that questions like this ideally should not be questions like this should not be coming up in this type of process so i think as far as my general position goes you know as long as we are um agreeing that the earth tones are sort of something we can um that we're sort of blanket in favor of as a as, as if you're meeting this criteria you can move through the process faster um, then I think uh, that seems pretty reasonable and that this would qualify as a white. So it's my general take. Thanks. 
Uh, Frank, do you have any comments? Uh, I agree, uh, Chris, and with Taro. I, I think it's also a question of scale. And when you're looking at this kind of single family residential scale versus, you know, three, four story apartment building scale of white being the predominant, you know, I think there's a reason our guidelines are, are written that way. So I appreciate, you know, passing along this example. And it sounds like the applicant's willing to kind of go back and review or take a look at the colors again. So um, yeah, this, this is white. And I, yeah, I, I kind of agree with Chris. I mean, I think I don't, there's certain instances where it's, it works, but you know, we've got to go with what our guidelines say. Yeah, and to the po scale point, like I was noticing that too when driving around, like the this clubhouse is kind of broken up into several different volumes. It kind of minimizes the impact of it. The townhouses down the road, like they all use it, but they um, use it on just one of those townhomes at a time and sort of do the various shades of gray down the road. So I think also to the point of scale of white being an important consideration, um, I feel like that's also reflected in the example. Yeah, I agree. I thought that was a, a really good point to make, Frank. Um, but still, we're talking about kind of administrative review um, where I feel like it should be a little more cut and dried than it might be in the context of, uh, you know, a full board review where, you know, the, there's a little bit more latitude and an opportunity to explain some design choices and, uh, you know, uh, I think for a administrative review, it just needs to be, you know, it either follows it or not. So um, that's what I needed. That's very helpful. All right. Well, thank you. Um, so the topic of our second work session is the entrance corridor design guidelines addenda for the Crozet segment of Route 250 West. Uh, Margaret and Mariah um, have a presentation. I'm going to pull that one up. Are you able to see my screen? Right. So uh, today we're hoping to get your comments on the content of the agenda for the Crozet segment of the uh, Route 250 West corridor. Uh, this segment um, is a longer than the previous ones that we've looked at and that has resulted in a longer um, general characteristics section and that um, uh, then led us to move the photos um, to the second sheet uh, where some of the previous um, uh, templates, you saw some uh, photos across the bottom of the first sheet as well. Um, you may have noticed in this, um, in this segment, the images uh, have the addresses that are more readable. Um, hopefully um, that uh, format works for you all. Um, but before we move on to discuss uh, the schedule, um, we could stop here um, for comments on the text and the format of this segment. Um, in addition to comments on the specific text and images, um, just something to keep in mind as we're moving through this process, when you are reviewing these segments, um, if the quarter is one that you surveyed or if it's one that you travel um, often, um, please consider um, when you're reviewing it, um, if the text and the images, uh, if it, if it's looking like and sounding like they're accurately capturing the character of the segment or the character of the corridor. Um, so uh, I guess I'll just stop here um, for comments at this point. Thanks. Um, Tara, do you have any uh, comments? Um, I don't want to be too nitpicky, but I, because I generally think that this <laughs> has been great and it's awesome to see the um, Sort of rate of production and uh, just being able to review these more uh, frequently coming up with a 
regular rhythm. Uh, I guess just it would be nice to have some paragraph breaks in the general characteristic sections to make it a little bit more readable. Um, hopefully that's not too much of an imposition or too nitpicky of a comment. And generally, I really appreciate all this work that you all are putting in. Thank you. If you want to be nitpicky, it's fine. We're happy to get comments. <laughs> All right, thanks, Taro. Uh, Frank, do you have any comments? My only comment is it looks great. Um, nice work. And to see the template be adaptable, you know, like you'd said, how you'd set it up for corridors that had more examples than, you know, this is perfect, perfectly done. So it's nice when your template works as intended and everything. That's good. That's all thanks to Mariah. Nice work. Thank you. All right, thanks, Frank. I, I, I agree um, 100%. I think this looks great. And um, it's, it's nice to see that the template is working, um, particularly on a segment like this, where there's a few areas with different character in, in one segment. And it seems like this, uh, this format's able to to accommodate that, um, which is great. So, I did have one kind of question. Sorry about that. Just came back to me. Is it worth showing an image of the Harris Teeter building? I know, like scale wise, we referenced that um, with other projects near or either within this segment or near this segment. Uh, I think the brick detailing is worth noting and just the mass of a grocery store building on the corridor, I think it's pretty successful. It doesn't overpower. I mean, the grade helps it for sure, but. I think that's a good point. Um... Um, Mariah, maybe we could look at um, combining two of the images that are that we've got in there right now, like you did the um, the two um, street views, so that we could add the Harris Theater building. Yeah, we can do that. Great. We'll look at making those changes. Um, bring them to you for next time. Great. Um, can we move on to talk about a uh, schedule? We good to go? Yes. Okay, so um, I have drafted a schedule um, for completing the rest of the work that's to be done. Um, flexibility is gonna be key. <laughs> um, we think that we can get um, one segment done per week. So we'd love to be able to bring two um, to each meeting in the future, but um, we'll just have to, um, uh, just remain flexible depending on what other workload um, is coming up. Uh, with the survey work that's already been completed by board members, that will take us to the begin beginning of September. So um, what I've done here, um, and this is a two-page uh, schedule, um, I've got work for Airb members um, to be completed in six-week increments. So each member um, would be completing one quarter by August 15th, and then another one by late September, and then the last by early November. And if that all works out, like I've got it here, um, we would be done by the end of the year. Um, I, it does feel ambitious, but we're, we're going to do our best to, to keep to that. Uh, so the question for board members is, um, do you think that the schedule will work for you. What I, and I, obviously I will follow up and send this to you. Um, so what it would mean is, let's see, for those present today, Chris, by August 15th, um, Route 20 South, um, uh, you would have surveyed, um, and Frank, um, Hydraulic Road, and Taro um, 29 North, which is a lot of work. Uh, and then by the end of September, um, Rank, uh, Rio Road, Chris, Fifth Street, Taro Airport Road, 
to men by early November. Frank, uh, Ryle Road. Uh, Chris, you've got um, Interstate 64, the East End. And Frank, uh, the John Warner Parkway. That six weeks seems like a really uh, reasonable amount of time uh, to do that. Uh, in my case, regardless of how much time I have to do it, I'll be doing it like the day before it's due anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just going to uh, say, you don't have to wait for those days. <laughs> So uh, that to me seems like a reasonable amount of time, like to to get it into your schedule and you know and do it. If uh, I don't know uh, if uh, Tara and Frank would agree with that, but it seems reasonable to me. Yeah, I'd agree with the doing it. I mean, yeah, like when the deadline approaches. And I guess to that end, um, I think this seems very reasonable. The one thing I would ask is if we can, as a group, revisit this as um, as we review new segments, just so that we can all, because August 15th feels far away now. So I just want to make sure that we're all tracking that it's a, the, the closer it approaches. So we have a good amount of time to schedule that those visits or you know what i'll do is um each time we're presenting um a segment uh, a template to you um i'll have this in the presentation and then we'll try try to fill it in as we go so everyone's aware um and as you start uh the or as you continue the survey work as you're using that um um the form um the fillable form if if you're finding that that's not working for any reason or it needs some adjustments um just let us know and we'll um because um, we want to make it as as easy and efficient as possible for you. Thank you very much. It's great. Sounds good. All right, great. Well, uh, thanks a lot, Margaret. Um, um, I actually have one oh, question. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm really glad that you all like the format a lot. Um, one of the main things that we are trying to do in this is, is make sure that the content is right. So even though it looks pretty, is the information right? Um, is there, um, at the scale that we're giving it to you, I know it's not as exceptionally legible, but um, is this a good way to review the, the narrated parts of it? Or would a document be, be better? Um, I just noticed that a lot of comments we're getting are, are about format, um, but not necessarily um, word changes. And I think um, the ARB has always been very detailed. So I wonder if we're giving it to you in the right form. To me, this form um, seems just as easy as a, um, as a document. Um, I just think, at least for these two segments, which I, travel those segments just frequently. Um, you know, I thought it was a really good description of the, the segments that we've seen so far. Um, I personally didn't uh, take issue with any of the verbiage or think there were any really omissions uh, made. So, um, so, and I, I think at least for these segments, I would have noticed that just because like I said, I, I'm on 250 all the time. So, um, so I think you just kind of nailed it. Um, and, you know, I one thing, you know, sorry to interrupt, Chris. One thing to note, it looks like you're already doing this, but maybe while you're writing or reviewing, if you kind of cross reference the design guidelines and just check language or examples, you know, that direct directly relate back to the design guidelines. Um, I think that it, I, I've noticed some of that in the language you've used, but just might be worth writing it, reviewing the design guidelines and going back and seeing if there are, you know, lines you can draw back. I think that would help the applicant and then help our consistent voice. 
great idea. If there are no issues, I don't mean to make an issue out of nothing. I just, I just wondered if, if, if everybody's still looking at, um, at both parts that it's trying to convey. Well, I guess to that point, just being someone who's coming into some of this process a little bit later, um, I guess I just want to. Can we revisit the 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 process by which these segments are being created? Like after we produce the uh, like fill in the checklist. Um, I guess I'm just wondering: Are there multiple points of review of the content? Um, are we placing it directly into the template and approving the template? There, uh, are we going back and forth? Maybe this will become clearer once we actually, once I actually produce a segment. Yeah, I um, think that the plan is um, for you to um, fill in the, the fill in the form, and then we'll meet and talk with you about your impressions of um, um, what you found, and then um, we will take um, what you've written and what we've or what you filled in on the form and what we've discussed in our meeting with you, and and we'll put it into this. Um, into the into the one pager and then um, I guess uh, we could um, then maybe run a draft by um, by you individually whoever did the survey work um, and then maybe adjust it um, before we bring it to the ARB as a full group um, is that how does that sound no that sounds great I, I guess I, I just felt like I wasn't necessarily reading assuming that I was the only one vetting it, you know, to that level of uh, like checking the claims. So I didn't have specific, like, um, I didn't have any like factual questions. I, I did get the sense that it was well put together and that um, I was kind of on board with the, the general content of it. So I, I just wanted to be clear about sort of how much review the content is getting and and what our role is in reviewing the pieces once they come out. So just wanted to get a little clarification, I guess. Right, and then we thought that also, uh, yeah, we're bringing you individual segments when we get to a point where all the segments of one quarter are done, we'll, we'll put, give them to you in a group to look at um, again, just to make sure it, that it flows and it makes sense together. All right, great. Um, so if there are no other questions or comments, um, would anyone care to make a motion to approve the June 21st minutes? So moved. I'll second that. Uh, could we put it to a vote? Yes, Mr. Matsuno? Aye. Mr. Hancock? Aye. Mr. Henningsen? Mm -hmm. Aye. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the next ARB meeting is scheduled for July 18th, 2022. This will be a virtual meeting. Um, Taro or Frank, do either one of you think you may not be able to attend? I'm planning to attend. All right. I'm sorry, could you repeat that date again? I'm, I'm just going to go back. It's uh, July 18th. July 18th is fine. I'll be there. Okay. I also am planning on it. Um, so are there any uh, other items for discussion or questions or anything? If not, then this meeting is adjourned until the next meeting on July 18th. Uh, the time on my clock is 1.45 p.m. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a Thank great you. two weeks. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.